Got you. Yeah, no, that's interesting because I was going to ask about that. And I think that you answered it. And this may be the complete answer. Um, why can a business sell for a multiple of two? And when we say multiple, everyone, um, I assume you're meaning multiple off of revenue, right? So if a business is or are you meaning multiple off of the sell price? Which one are you, are you talking about? Multiple of the of the uh, cash flow. So of the cash flow, yeah. instead of revenue, it's actual net. And typically for businesses under $5 million, it's going to be based off of the net income. Uh, there are, as you get larger, which is, you know, some people ask like, why do you like doing the small deals? And I really stay focused even with our most recent fund uh, where we, we raised eight figures. And in, in that fund, you know, I was very clear, we're gonna focus on these small deals because you're a, there's so little competition and we're able to buy them at a, a, a multiple of the net income. Uh, as opposed to it being based off revenue or anything. Got you. So if the net income was $150,000 or something, and it's a 2X multiple, that means 150,000 times two equals 300,000. Uh, so the sale price you know, would be around 300,000 for a 2X multiple, is that right? Exactly, exactly. And we we uh, in the, have had one deal that's been above three. So typically, you know, and that, that's out of, uh, in the last year, we, we've closed 14 deals. Uh, and, and so, yeah, we had one that was basically 3.25, but most of them are gonna be below three. Got you. So I think that you explained it, but um, let's make sure I didn't miss anything. The reason you are able to get these low multiples is because of the competition. Uh, so the market isn't, you know, um, I guess what information asymmetry, I guess, right? Or whatever, like there's not a lot of competition out there. Um, it's not as transparent, let's call it, um, or as you know, concrete as like the housing market, you know, something like that. Uh, so because of those types of things, you are able to get it at a lower price uh, because you know with your skill set and the systems that you have put, in, put into place that you will be able to actually excel and grow that business. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, part of it is just simple supply and demand. There's a, a lot of supply. There's nobody that that's coming in and, and doing those deals. Um, the other part, second thing that, that I would probably say is like a, a bullet point in that is you want to uh, get a deal that's not on the market. This is unlike real estate. You know, uh, number one, sellers don't don't advertise. That's why you don't see a sign up in front of a business that says this is for sale. So you got to know how and where to uh, where to find these deals and, and do those. So there are other things, but those will be kind of the top two as to uh, why why they sell that way. So Ace, yeah. um, an analogy for you. I want you to complete this analogy like we're doing the SAT or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If real estate or if location, location, location is to real estate, what is that same thing to uh, to businesses, buying businesses? Deal structuring. Deal structuring. And, and here's why, you know, I, I was very, very fortunate. Um, you know, I, I was wondering my way through this stuff, just figuring it out. You know, the first thing with my first deal was just the realization of, wow, you know, the same way that we go out and we can finance a, a car and and buy it, the same way that we uh, buy a, a house, you can also just go buy income. That was my first paradigm shift. Uh, but, and then I got into the second deals and realized, okay, like this could really be a career, buying and selling business, especially when I compared it to to real estate. It's like, all right, this this could be a thing. I just had no examples where somebody was flipping small businesses or buying and growing small businesses. And I um, uh, was just really fortunate to have a buddy who's like, man, I, there's this guy named Mike, he, he does some stuff. I think it's similar to you and y'all should meet. And, and so one day I met a, uh, a foundation event, basically a nonprofit event, and uh, I run into him. I'm like, man, you know, my buddy's been telling me we should meet, like, tell me what you do. And, he tells me I, I flip hospitals. <laughs> I'm like, what? You know, that was still mind blown for me. Like, people do that. Like, but um, you know, he had an amazing story. Had a lot of experience. He's the person that kind of brought me back from the brink of just like, I will. You know, once once that business went down, I didn't look at it as I turned three thousand dollars into two hundred eighty. I looked at it as this business failed. 
you know, I dropped out of college, my everything is over because we don't, I, I didn't know that that, that was a, a thing. But the other thing that that he, he did, well, we had a, a lot of amazing, uh, I had a lot of amazing lessons from him. But one of those things initially was when you're looking at a deal, it's all about deal structure, like literally all about deal structure. And he talked about, you know, if you can get complete control of deal structure, and you you can buy a hundred million dollar business, but the guy wants you to pay a billion dollars. That can be a great deal if you tell him, "I'll pay the the billion dollars, but I want complete control over deal structure," because you can pay him a thousand dollars a month for the next ten thousand years, and that still become could become an amazing deal. So it, the, in in this stuff, it's really cool because you are in control and and that's something you know when you I, I do a thing with in in our training where I, I show I give people 101 different forms of financing that we walk through just to start expanding people's mind and then when you think about the combination of okay you could have some accounts receivable financing with some seller financing uh with some leases on, on equipment you know it's just endless things that you can put together to have a deal structure that, that makes that deal work and um that's 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 the difference between a really amazing deal you know my first deal turning that that being able to leverage three thousand dollars and and buy a proper business um but the thing that makes this cool is that in other spaces like like real estate there are uh just kind of conventional structures that people expect uh, they expect to have a mortgage and you know there are all these things and, and so it just it's a set thing the thing i love about this is that there's kind of this artistry to it there's kind of this creative uh point where there's just no limit you know i love the fact you know uh, one of my uh clients that, that i was talking to last week you know he put together a deal that that basically was almost like licensing uh that it, where he took over this business and it was something i've never done and so you know the sky's the limit, and and so that's that's why I say yeah, the, the deal structuring creativity when it when it comes to deal structuring is the location, location, location for uh, buying and selling businesses.